The Duggars moved on, and in 2004, their large brood began to gain national media attention. My name is Joshua Duggar. Resulting in TV pieces about their family. In December 2006, things nearly unraveled. With the family in Chicago and about to go on the Oprah Winfrey show, someone leaked the story of Josh Duggar's behavior to Oprah's production company. Writing in part, you need to know the truth. They are not what they seem to be. Harpo Studios faxed the letter to authorities, and a police investigation was formally opened. According to the now revealed police reports, which as juvenile records were not subject to disclosure, a judge is dealing with that separately, the family told police that Josh had been inappropriate with five girls. Five victims were interviewed and confirmed that Josh was sent to a Christian treatment program. Each victim said no other abuse had taken place by anyone else or by Josh after counseling. Ultimately, it was determined that the three-year statute of limitations had run, and authorities decided not to bring charges. Okay, so it's all behind you for, for all intents and purposes. And then in 2008, you launched a reality TV show. What would make you launch a reality TV show about your family, given this past? You know, back in, back early on, uh, it was after uh, all this was taken care of in 2000, 2000, 2003, um, we actually had a magazine that, that came to Michelle and said, hey, can we do a story about your family? And we said, yes, that would be fine. But are you thinking at all, wait, this might not be a good idea because when you bring cameras into your home, they tend to discover things and people get more interested in you. We had nothing to hide. We had taken care of all that years before. And when they asked us to do the reality TV show, all this had been taken care of five years before. And we had a clean bill of health from the state. We had said you've gone through counseling, you had told the police. Did any of the girls or did Josh say, whoa, hold on, mom and dad, hold on? We had no fear because we hadn't, we, everything was taken care of. And that was a suit, that was a, that was actually a sealed juvenile record. Mm -hmm. And so, and they had told us that all this stuff was, was done as a juvenile. This was all stuff that was sealed. And this is stuff that under law, there's no way that this could ever be brought out. Did you live in fear that it might come out? I don't know that we lived in fear because we had all resolved it. It had been forgiven. We moved on with life. When you heard that in late May, that the story had broken, that you hadn't been given a heads up by any of the official police involved that they were going to do this. What was your reaction? I said, God, um, I know that there's a lot of families out there that are hurting. And you know what? This isn't something we wanted to come out. But if people can see that Josh, who did these very bad things when he was a young person, that God could forgive him for, for these terrible things then I hope other people realize that God can forgive them and also make them a new creature. Do, do you th was there any motivation that you know of for this police chief to want to hurt your family? Um, I'm really not for sure. There must be an agenda. I, I'm not sure if there was a bribe profit. or if there was some kind of personal agenda or something. It definitely wasn't to be caring about the victims. Had you had any prior dealings with her? Um, you know, I think Josh had had, had talked to her one day at a meeting and he, he said hi to her and stuck out his hand and she turned and wouldn't talk to him. She was getting ready to retire and uh, you know just even a few weeks ago she said you know I'm getting ready to retire and there's a few things I want to do before I retire. You think you were and on think, the list? I think I was on the list. Any chance of you suing her or the city for this disclosure? Uh, we're talking to some attorneys about that right now and we'll see but uh, I think the big picture is protecting juveniles' rec records. And I think that's something that we want to be an advocate for protecting juvenile records because the mistakes that juveniles make when they're young should be sealed. How, how is this, there's been so much focus on your son. How has this affected your daughters, the release of this information? Oh, I think our daughters have, you know, they were, they were shocked to hear this. It's something that crushed them at first, but... They did not want this out publicly. No, they didn't want this out, and no victim wants their record or their minor uh, 
story to be told. Every victim should, should have the right to tell their own story, mm -hmm. not a tabloid. The main charge we've heard from your critics has been they are hypocrites. They preached family values. Josh once said, we are the epitome of conservative values. And yet they had this secret and they weren't honest with the world about who they were. I don't think you go up to total strangers and say, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I want you to know what I did was a child and just share everything about your past. You know, every family has things happen in the families. And some families maybe have darker things than others, but everybody deals with something. But what about, but, it, it, I, what the critics are going for is that you, you shouldn't have been preaching about moral values when you had a secret like this in your own family. That you should be calling other people sinners when you yourselves are sinners. And our son violated God's principles of, mm -hmm. making, of doing some improper touching. That was, that was terrible. But yet, I think it's been recently said that what Josh did was inexcusable, but it was not unforgivable. Mm -hmm. Mike Huckabee said that when I was a friend of your family. Michelle, let me ask you because, you, you know, you, you were in the news for making a robocall that suggested transgender people might want to go into the bathrooms of girls, locker rooms of girls, and that they may be child molesters. Folks have used that in the past week against you saying, how could you unfairly, in their view, compare transgendered people to child molesters, suggest they are child molesters, knowing what you know about Josh. I think that protecting young girls and not allowing young men and men in general to go into a girl's locker room is just common sense. But this, this is different because you injected child molestation into it. I think you actually said pedophile in that. And actually a pedophile is a, an adult that preys on children. Joshua was actually 14 and just turned 15 when he did what he did. And I think the legal definition is 16 and up for being an adult preying on a child. So he, so he was a child preying on a child. You do not view Josh as a pedophile? No. no. What I'm asking you is, can you understand the critics' reaction to this news? I can understand that, but I think we've never... I know that every one of us have done things wrong. We're, that's why Jesus came. I feel like this is more about there's an agenda and there's there's people that are purposing to try to bring things out and twisting them to to hurt and slander